And we're back. All right. Audio's going. Video's live. We're back. Welcome to the second half of our episode. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground in our first half, and I think the second half is going to be just as exhilarating. Phil, you were telling us about your kitty cat just a moment ago. Yeah, I um, recently got a ki- we, Well, we just kind of said fuck it one day and said let's get a cat because uh, I always wanted to have a house pet. I didn't want to get a dog because I wouldn't be able to give it the enough attention. I would still to this day love to have a fucking dog if I had somebody like dogs sit on the side. And um, what are your thoughts on ferrets? Yeah, yeah, ferrets. Oh, should I tell that story? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about the Ken, then we can revisit ferrets. Let's stay on topic. <laughs> Sandry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. I, um, yeah, I, uh, I got, um, we were trying to get a cat through, you know, obviously the right way, like adoption center mm-hmm. or whatever, and they have to come to your house and make sure every, you know, are you sure you don't have any fucking dumbass kids Wait, who are really going to rip it apart? They came here? They yeah. visited your home? No, that, that's what adoption places do. They have to make really? sure you don't... It, actually, too... Man, when we got it, when we got it, our dog and cat from the pound, they didn't give a shit. Yeah, they'd be like, like, all right, there yeah. you go. Yeah, no, these no, are we'll like... we'll pay you. These are like some straight up like animal activists, like uh, PETA people. Like they... I mean, she didn't really check it out that much, but one thing that I noticed, too, when I looked up like a funny cat compilation... I was like, why don't they, they don't like it when you have people who are six years or younger. And the reason is because kids don't know any fucking better. Yeah. So they will fight like WWF wrestle the fucking cat to the ground. Like there's video comp, like cat compilations where the, cat, the there's like a two year old just grabbing it by the tail and spinning it around. Oh, God. Like it's North Carolina, you know, <laughs> but, um. Uh, so I got, we were trying to get a cat and I got a little too pumped and I, before we even got the cat a week beforehand, I built a huge four by four by four cat castle called Catsylvania. <laughs> I wanted, um, it to be very black metal themed. I was going to call it Varg, but Varg's a racist dumbass. Mm-hmm. And, um, actually I was going to call it Varg and model it exactly of the structure of the church that he burned down. Stankoff, yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, it would be, it would be kind of cool. Well, Very mean, sentimental. There's right? no rule against having two little cat playgrounds, right? Yeah. I mean, um, you just fill the house with them. Right. Catsylvania needs a neighbor. Just well, well, this, so, um, also two expenses. It's only like $40 a month to have a cat, like, uh, like as far as just litter and food. Oh yeah, it's so. not it's not super. So I have a dog, and it's not like anything out of the. I thought I don't. Well, the other thing too is like you don't have to walk, and it was um, it was kind of like half. Tra- it's it Wait, was. What uh, about vet bills and shit? Like, do you take the, it in for checkups? When, when we got in for uh, usually about like a hundred to two hundred bucks a year. Yeah. Okay. And when we and because we got it from the adoption place, it already had all its shots taken care of and all that. Yeah. Nice. Yes. And, and you uh, have to get to, I don't know how exactly what it is with cats. I know with dogs, there's some that you have to get every year, and then some you have to get every three years. And like Ours is rabies, but the cat yeah, lady a, said that you don't really need it for cats because they don't even fucking leave the house. But I'm getting it a harness so that we can terrorize the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Lucy on the street. Right. I'm probably just gonna tie it, the harness to a drone and. Flying Lucifer. That you know. oh, it'd be like the six-year-old like spinning it, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> that, that sounds, sounds nice. I actually, um, I did. I only did one very mean thing. One thing. <laughs> oh, All <okay>. right. <laughs> well, well, and I don't think it's, the, it's how many regular mean things have you done? <laughs> yeah, this is the <laughs> one. This very is one mean. really mean yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, well, the, uh, disclaimer: this is a very mean thing. Post. Philip is like lovely about cats, so it's kind of like a small mean thing. It's not that mean. I didn't like, you know, accident. Oh, I accidentally left him in the magic bullet type thing. Well, what oh, happened? Fucking well, there was, <laughs> there was, there was a video that um, Kelly said about. Uh, there's a guy who's like taking a bath with his cat and rapping while the cat is bobbing his head. So I wanted to see, um, like if the if uh, the cat's like water friendly, and it really loved sleeping. Well, it's funny. Kelly Cat can. 
I love Kelly's huge ass, but he, she um she has a very the cat loves her cushiony ass. Wait, so she the um, mean thing. Are the, we getting oh, there? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So <laughs> so she uh, well yeah. Stay on topic. I got yelled at about, about Kelly's ass. So. I know I know. Well, well no, the, it 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 goes into it that the cat really loves sleeping on either my fat belly or Kelly's big butt. So um because because I would literally like well, it's I, I sleep on my back and Kelly sleeps on her stomach. So I would literally just wake up like looking for it, and it's right in the butt crack of Kelly. And the funny thing is, too, it tweaked out because we have the um, like memory foam uh, mattress, mattress thing. Yeah. So it's going like this, like like just yeah for like twenty minutes trying to find because she thinks there's like a trap door that's gonna pop out. Like, why <laughs> is this so cushiony? So as soon as she jumped on her butt, she's doing the same thing, and Kelly's like, ah, oh, massage, you know? <laughs> and um. And I mentioned, too, it was funny. Too. Well, I'm going off track again. But anyways, it was sleeping on my stomach. And so I'm like, fuck, maybe it's comfortable on my stomach. I want Kelly to see if she can put it on my belly while I'm in the bathtub. And then you lit it on fire. I mean, that's... All right, sorry. Spoil- all that's right, a yeah. regular mean thing, isn't right. it? <laughs> no, 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 right. no. That's the super mean thing. That's it. That it just it ran up Kelly and scratched the shit out of her arm. And then it uh, would... S- it sounds like it was more of a super mean thing to Kelly. I don't know. I mean, she's into that. <laughs> she's into that. No, but I mean, uh, the the cat, I mean, it made me feel bad because, um, you know, they, they like lose trust. So she had to like sleep under the bed for like a day. And and she just stayed under there for a full day because she like lost trust. And I don't know. But that's pretty much all the cat adventure. She, she couldn't trust you guys anymore yeah. after the bathtub thing? Yeah. Is she over it? Oh, yeah. She's over it after a day. Um, I'm trying to feel. think the only the only other thing that was really funny was that with the cat is um, we asked the cat lady like you know does she have any previous issues or anything that we should know about mm-hmm. she goes well she has the sniffles and I'm like what the fuck does the sniffles mean what kind of condition is it well I don't know she sneezes a lot so it got even funnier because um, like for example I have incense in my front room and she like started sneezing a little bit. That cat, that cat's got the sniffles. Yeah, she's got the sniffles. Mm-hmm. And then I forgot what else uh, happened, but yeah, she. Oh no! While I was building the castle, because cause she can't, uh, we bought her, and then the cat, the castle wasn't made for like two days, so there was fucking sawdust everywhere, even here. Like I had to vacuum the, and she breathed in a shitload of it, so she was just sneezing all the fucking time. Oh. It was so bad. That the funny thing is she, um, I think she ran in the basement when we were at work. So she made it worse and she woke me up the next day because now her sneezes sound like a uh, kazoo. It's just like, a <laughs> like oh, oh, that so, can't be good. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's when we asked her, she's got mad sniffles. What do we do? Now? <laughs> and she said that. Gotta you're put her down, pa. Yeah. We got to set her on fire and throw her in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. But you know, we, um, uh, she told us to grind up lysine, human vitamin, and put it in her food. And I guess it clears up, like, respiratory shit. No food. more sniffles. No more sniffles. Nope. She got it back the day after she lost it, though, because uh. I uh, I cooked some. Oh, I tried making homemade fries, but it, frying them in coconut oil. And I turned around, and there's, like, you can't see three inches in front of you because there's so much smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah. They were healthy as hell, but she got the sniffles again. Oh, Lucy and, got the sniffles. And the whole fucking house smelled like a s- hot dog shack, you know. <laughs> How did they turn out? They turned out very, very fucking good. I used, like, some Italian s- seasoning that you put on, like, spaghetti on nice. the fries, and they were, like, pretty spicy. And... Yeah, we got, we we got the cat half because of like Zach mentioned the ferret. I exactly fucking, right. Bring it back. Now I'm getting us derailed. Yeah, dude. I, um, Gavin, when we moved here, they had a ferret and they were in love with it. Uh, it drove me nuts because car- ferrets piss on themselves. To, they they feel like oh I'm gonna piss on myself and then rub myself against everything to mark things, instead of like a dog that pees on a tree to mark things. Clever but, devils. So Gavin's, like, all his clothes, uh, his whole room, everything smelled like piss. <laughs> and 
So I decided to do like, you know, like be a nice dad and I got him a taxidermied ferret and said, here's your new ferret. We're getting rid of the ferret. <laughs> <laughs> so. God, father of the year. Yeah, I really, I, I think that's the way to go. Do you ever uh, worry that like you love him too much? <laughs> the, the only thing that um, weirded me out is when I showed his, uh, we wanted to show Lucy love and be like, you know, you're the new pet that we love now. So we tried getting it to get to know the taxidermy ferret. <laughs> and, uh, sure. She was getting along great. She was giving it hugs and everything. I'm not joking. But it was kind of weird to see her hug like a stuffed fucking pet. You know? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It seems so. uh, like one of those bizarre things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but still very important to see. Well, yeah. I mean, love is always important. Oh, that's right. That's right. Speaking I of would, love, I would love. love I, I, I'm wondering if it's legal to stuff a family member instead of like, you know, bury them. Oh, you're like, going all psycho <laughs> on this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Ed Gein would might have not done the things he did if he got his mask stuffed. Man, are there any good esports on this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's go into that a little bit further. Well, um, well, <laughs> well, 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 well real. Oh, qu- you have more to say. <laughs> No, no. Did did you guys see that video of the of the gangbanger, um, who in his funeral or anything? No, no. no. So, um, I forgot exactly what it was, but, um, there's like a kid who got, uh, he was like a gangbanger who got shot, and the family. I'm not even. I'm not kidding. This is a real fucking video because they had an article about it. They found out a way to have a funeral. They don't want to see him like the mom would like pass out every time she would think of him ha- being in a coffin. So they wanted to have like, you know, when you go to the funeral, you pay your respects and then you kind of talk to the people around them. Yeah. Well, that part where they talk to people around them, they're like, fuck going up to the coffin and saying your respects. Let's have him hang out the way he used to hang out. And they put some kind of chemical in him where they keep him in a, po- where they keep the body in a pose. And he's literally just like one leg over the other and just, Flesh and signs, a uh, de- dead body. <laughs> <laughs> God, really? Uh, this yeah. is real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not kidding. Like puppet Which, strings. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did he did he dance a little uh, a little bit during the funeral? Uh, is it a hologram like at Coachella? Oh, yeah, Tupac. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, unfortunately. What, you what, know, that, what, that's what would what he do I, as a hologram to remember a gangbanger? You know, oh, you remember that first drive by? You know, I look at, and that, and he had this first gun. He he didn't he didn't have he didn't even know what a good Uzi is. That fucking wannabe thug. No, I'm sure he still had friends and you know family and <laughs> love. I don't know. I want to be propped up like that at my funeral. That's uh, I. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Putting I d- this, I'm putting this on I, you. I took I, it, first. I, I took All this right. this podcast in a weird direction. No, it's fine. I, <laughs> Sandry's on board. Yeah, I mean, it, idea. I I think it's a great idea. I don't want anyone to see me in a coffin. I want I want them to see me maybe with the Nixon pose. The Nixon pose. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Signs? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, For sure. I um, I think. I'd like to be a human bobblehead, and with a so- sound. Clip. So, so remove your neck. That sounds <laughs> gruesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put a spring in. Yeah. So, be a, so people could just like tap you in the face, yeah. and it just bobble. And then, a little and bit. then, and then, like the bo- the bobblehead that I got for Kelly, it would have a sound clip of me saying the stuff that I most say. For Ferrets piss on themselves. Be? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not gonna be offensive, but. I'm not going to be offensive, but while my, while my, <laughs> while my head's long story bobbling. short, long story short, <laughs> while my head's bob- bobbling, long story short, long story short, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> ah, that sounds way funnier than I imagined. Probably would be in real life. <laughs> That'd be a fucking horrifying. She wake. didn't want to see him in his coffin. Long story short, long story short. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're putting you in the ground and still you can hear like yeah long story short long story that, short. that was just gets more and more muffled as time goes on that would be a good campfire story you know <laughs> and still when you walk by his coffin <laughs> long story short long yeah. story short and you hear his head clicking clanking against the coffin <laughs> <laughs> the, the they, bobble man <laughs> <laughs> they say on nights just like tonight if you listen to the wind real close 
you can hear <laughs> oh, oh, oh Felicio Phil in his coffin. <laughs> long story. Short. About to start a really long story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sail- the wind blows. Long story short. <laughs> long story short. I'm not gay. Want a blowjob? I'm not gay. <laughs> 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 uh, what was the joke you made earlier? Like yamaka pancakes in the oven? Oh. Is that I, yeah, yeah. Was that on the podcast or was that a side conversation? That was, was not a side I would definitely oh, not want that on podcast. All right. Okay, my bad. All right, can we take that out? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. That's why I'm glad we don't do any uh, live broadcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, to our Irish listeners, especially. Well, now I have to explain myself if you said I made that joke, right? Well, I well, mean, if you feel it's necessary. No, I I'm thought we fine. were just going to cut that yeah, the fuck just, out. Okay. <laughs> we could just, uh, um, like, play a song over it, maybe? Well, no. The re- the, okay. I I think I can take it in a good direction with this. <laughs> I, I was. Are you I'm sure serious. gonna try? I, I, I'm serious <laughs> because I saw a. Wait, the, do you hate editing video that much? I. 100. percent <laughs> That is the reason why. I'm not even kidding. That is the fucking reason why. But All right, go for it. The, the, the reason why I made that joke earlier is because it reminded me of I was watching an episode of The Green Room again. You know, four yeah. comedians, and they had Roseanne on there, and oh. she said um, that she. Uh, like people were saying that she has lost her edge or something because she, now she's just like a family mom and all that shit. So she, um, <laughs> there's like a, uh, waiting for the yamaka pancakes. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm well, wondering how Roseanne factors into well, all of this. this I see where he's going. Th- this was harsh, but here's what I mean: is like, and this, and this is why I love Patrice O'Neill. It was the Patrice O'Neill uh, episode. He said, "Dude, if you're in fucking comedy." Everything is funny. I don't give a fuck if it's hate speech or if it's regular speech. It's funny if you make it funny. If it's not a good joke, you're just an idiot. You may not even be... uh, Anyways, she was saying that she... There was a... They wanted to do an... uh, It was like a Hebrew magazine where they wanted to have her... um, Show her what she does during the holidays um, when she... like, Like when the holidays come around. So she sent them a picture of her with like a Hitler mustache and uh cooking cookies like gingerbread men and she's like guess who guess who those are oh they're a little burnt you know oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right i mean like you and then and i get that like like you can go blue some stuff well she, well she was saying that um like she didn't get it because they contacted her obviously because she's jewish and then patrice kind of took it to like so he's like yeah, that doesn't look realistic because those gingerbread men they're supposed to be skinnier. <laughs> like Oh. <laughs> oh but yeah. Can't catch me. Yeah. I don't know. All right. No, did I, th- did I take it a better direction? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that. Yeah, I was to say yeah. that, no, that you definitely saved it. Uh, or did I just make worse editing for me? No. All right, no, I'm going to save it even better. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> no, no listen, was, here's the thing. Here's yeah, the thing. Right. <laughs> right. No, that I think that was great. But um, yeah. Have you guys heard about the documentary that you know how Vice does really like quirky documentaries? I mm. I don't know if quirky, quirky like where they take a very like specific, in, in, speci- very specific, yeah, almost insignificant, definitely irrelevant, but weird topic, and they make a documentary out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, they made a documentary of you oh, know. Damn it, you're starting y- your story now. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, where uh, you know when people write their names in cement. Long story short. Long story short. Yeah. All right, people write their names in <laughs> cement. Yeah, and, and they and they take the um. Well, they they were going to trace the people who wrote their names there by taking the DNA off the cement. Oh, really? Interesting. No, I completely made this up. Oh, there's my build up. Sorry. All right. Uh, I feel lied to. So wait. Yeah. So Vice doesn't really do quirky no, no. documentaries. No, no, they do, but the they do thing. just uh, apparently oh. not about. The but thing. it's a good idea, isn't? How would you get DNA off of that? I don't know, because because people would walk over it and shit. I don't know. It, I, I thought about it because of the cat. Wouldn't you get thing. like the DNA that was on their shoes? Well, well, no. When it, if they're writing it with their finger, their like their name in the cement. Well, wouldn't you use a stick? All right, all right, okay. Let's all, all right. settle down. What is your favorite Vice documentary you've ever seen? When they did it on Gal, the singer of Gorgoroth. Okay. 
and <laughs> they um, so that's what you mean by like quirky like niche like yeah neat well yeah. Th- the reason why they made it is not because uh because because there was already a documentary on like oh church burning and all this but they did it on him about how they wanted him to explain how did you get into the you know the isolation of you know why does the isolation of norwegian area get you into this uh dark area in your mind where you make this music and then they bring it up out of nowhere they're like does it have anything to do with you being like the only homosexual black metal singer <gasps> that was the guy that i said he kidnapped somebody right. from a bar <laughs> and sure had had a good evening had to make him drink his own blood <laughs> sure i um, oh but um uh yeah it was it was the Ooh, the, the, the reason why i like it is cuz <laughs> it ends with it ends with um that he quit the band because it, he, he is like, uh, you know, he couldn't control himself and he, he really doesn't like the scene anymore. They're not getting the the fantasy of death and Satan. So they go, well, what is what are you listening to these days? What's your favorite music? And he goes, Avril Lavigne, silence. <laughs> <That's what laughs> that, that was a, yeah. the sound I, I, of I, silence. I, 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 I was I was ho- listening to a lot of Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> I I, I, w- I was hoping the the journalist would get nervous and be like, uh, uh, do you, do you want me, you're saying you, you want me to you be want silent me to be quiet? Or, or is that or is no, that are what you, you like? answering the question or are you giving me an order? Yeah, yeah. Did Vice uh, did Vice like use uh, like put put the sound of silence over that part like as they <laughs> well as we're they, gonna like, hear. Uh, that's gonna be the out. that's gonna be the edited hear nothing see nothing version. <laughs> I like it. Remix alert. Right. Oh, and there was another one that I liked. I don't know if I could have a second favorite. Go to town when they made of Chief Keef. Um, oh, really? He, he was talking. I think it, I'm pretty sure it was Vice. They were talking about how he is banned from Illinois because he's a gangbanger. So now, anytime he performs, he he has he can only be a polygram. I I don't I can't corroborate that, but I. Do you remember hearing something weird about that, about how he tried to throw, like, I thought it was, like, a fundraiser sort of deal on the South Side, and, like, they wouldn't let him come play? Oh, no, no, he's, right. like, a targeted fucking gang member, so he he is, he cannot um Is he play. wanted here? He's, he, I don't think he's, like, wanted. They just, there's too many people after him to kill, and because, like, legally, he can be a threat to the crowd... So he can only perform as, I mean, they were saying like, they're like, so what do you do for your hobbies? And he goes down to like, uh, it was, it was like Peoria or something like the middle of Illinois. And they have a, the paintball, um, course that's modeled exactly after a call of duty level. And they use like paintball guns that look like real fucking guns. So I don't know. Hmm. And then, uh, and a funny thing is like in, I, I'm pretty sure in the documentary, they show a clip where he got in trouble because they were shooting. Uh, this is like I think he lives in California now because yeah he can't he can't be in Illinois. Um, he, they were shooting a music video for one of his videos, and he was like, uh, so they were shooting a music video for the video. Yes, no, to they play were shooting it, to, a music video. Yes, to, they were shooting. A, the they were shooting of the music video. I'm getting my shootings mixed up because they were filming a shooting in the video in the music video. So they were shooting a shooting. Yes. Right. And they they had uh they had blanks in the Uzis and he was just r- running down a yard and shooting the gun and then somebody in that neighborhood thought it was a real fucking gun and they Go figure. and there was already like a SWAT team waiting in the bushes and they take him down and it's like a behind the scenes clip. Uh, oh, oh that's <laughs> <laughs> So You should have kept that in the actual video. Yeah, right? So I think those also nice like don't you have to get like licenses for that shit like permits to be like hey we're gonna be in this random area shooting Our a shooting music set? video with like real looking guns and blanks yeah I, th- I mean maybe he wanted it to be extra you know just like home and <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> where so. they didn't get a permit and the guns are real yeah well I mean I, I'm, I'm guessing when he started out he had to probably just be like all right who's shooting who tonight we're filming a video. We're gonna be kind of in the corner though, so don't shoot us. You know, when when he's you know growing up in Inglewood, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah. Those hmm. are. Uh, do you guys have any favorite Vice documentaries? I think I've only ever seen one, and it was about like police surveillance, and how like in certain cities they have like cameras on like certain like street poles. 
and like they're triggered by gunshots and like the camera can like focus on like where it came from and like they know exactly where the shot was and mm-hmm. yeah that's a I, oh i can't remember the name of the system they deployed those in uh like all over the city of chicago recently oh and cool. they're su- they supposedly have reduced uh gun violence in certain neighborhoods that is good what about does it work for silencers I Probably, do, I don't know. I I can't answer that question. I think definitely, because I don't think silencers work as well as they do in like James Bond movies. It's not like you screw this thing on now. It's like pew 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 pew. I think no, th- there are like, some that do. I mean, they do. They're supposed, obviously, because they're called silencers. They're supposed to muffle the sound. But I, my understanding of of those were that they were mostly for like muzzle flashes, that they that they stop like the because you know when you you fire a gun you get a muzzle flash. Okay. From the yeah, ba- you're basically igniting a bomb on the inside to shoot a projectile, and like uh, from from my understanding, a, a lot of what a silencer does is like stop that muzzle flash. I I th- no I I think it's a sound too because it, there's no no it's a sound too but like that because it I works know, like I, a muffler that's why they're thicker and bigger on uh, machine guns. Well, I guess I guess we'll have to just get some and, yeah, and find we'll out. We'll have to shoot some off. All right, field trip. <laughs> but no, I still think it's still like very clearly a gun, and it's not like the person in the next room is not going to hear it. Also, are they legal? Well, well, I'm seeing mm. with those are sensors. silencers legal here. No, no, silencers aren't legal anywhere. I don't think, unless like the gun that says you get it registered with the ATF, you can drive a tank. You know. Sure. The, you go to the vet. They sell exactly the same thing, but it's for fish. It's a fish silencer. Yeah. <laughs> Get it registered with the ATF. What the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, you you can have a you can have a pipe bomb as long as you get it registered with the ATF. What is that vetting process like? That you just they, well, they, how they, do you how do you approach the ATF and go, hey, I have a pipe bomb. I really want it, like I want it for recreational purposes for for yeah, home yeah. safety. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to protect my family. Yeah. Self with this defense. Pipe bomb. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what he said. They put a stamp of serial number on it. I don't know how that doesn't explode. For a homemade charts. pipe bomb. Yeah, yeah. They they, they does uh, he have homemade pipe bombs? I th- I think he said he's made them before. Yeah, and he just, and and here I, it is. And I'm like, what, what? So what do you use that for? Hunting? He's like, no, oh, you just throw it in a field and it explodes. I'm like. Okay, so cool. he's got he's got IEDs just stamped by the ATF. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you get that shit like approved by the ATF, I think I yeah, th- there's something else he mentioned too. It sounds a little unbelievable. It sounds terrifying. Yeah, it sounds no. like terrorism. It sounds very much like terrorism. <laughs> no, I mean I mean or it's potential terrorism. Well, it's a alleged terrorism. Right. Well, I mean yeah, that's that's just like. Can we get him on the show? I was trying to get him on the show. He 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 don't want to get involved. Oh, he doesn't want to take the hot seat. Is he, I don't think he wants. I don't think he wants no, any I, video I, of I, him I, anywhere. Honestly, he, he's a ch- he's a chill guy. I've I've gotten to get along with him. You know, kind of understand him. But like, okay, like like we were saying earlier about how not everybody in this world ever is going to get along with each other. Yeah, but After, not all of us are making pipe bombs. I mean, a- after all that, he's 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 a really good person, you know, and that's and I don't know. I think that's the last thing that you know. Well, I mean, he did go through all the trouble to get him registered with the ATF, so obviously he's not going to use them in ill will. Yeah, 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 exactly, and that's what it is. That's why, like, I mean, there's that one argument about how like no shooters are members of the NRA and some shit. That's inaccurate, but I don't know. They 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 exclude a lot of like. Uh, like right wing radicant shooters in a lot of that analysis because they're not considered domestic terrorists in a lot of cases. Oh. So like it's people who shoot up like planned parenthood and that sort of shit which does happen a fair amount. Oh, I and like even... people who shoot up like uh, ethnic communities and things like that. Yeah. Like the police. Like the police, yes. Only less in blue uniform. I'm just trying to be edgy. Would, th- would those? That's be not edgy. That's unfortunately fact. Wow. But you don't have to be a member of the NRA if you own a gun. I don't think. No, I absolutely mean, so, not. So I I am a gun owner, and I'm not a member of the NRA. But you can so be. I could be. I someday won't because I don't agree with any of the rhetoric. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to delve deep into guns. I'm sorry, guys. 
I'm not shooting up the place right <laughs> now. <laughs> but no, we know. But um, yeah. I don't know what else. Did you guys hear Arlie Ermy died? Did he? Yep. Really? Yeah, he died like three days ago. Ah. Uh, you know who that is sick? Nope. He's the the sergeant in Full Metal Jacket. Okay. He was in Willard. Don't know Willard. No Full Metal Jacket. Not Willard. Should I know Willard? Uh, Crispin Glover talks to rats. Yeah. Doesn't he like hate his mother? So he trains his rats to eat her up. Probably. I haven't. Okay. Seen I movie. all right. Now I have to look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. at the, so no, it's I, great. I, I need it's to great. see this now. And um, what's Will Ermy? Will R. Lee Ermy. I don't know what the R, R stands for. R. Lee Ermy? Yeah. R. Lee Ermy. Okay, gotcha. Um, he really played, rolls off the tongue. He played the rat man's boss who accidentally kills the rat man's favorite mouse. And You mean the rat man's favorite rat? Right. Or I forget if they're mice or rats. They're great, regardless. They're uh, all rats. They, right. they sure are. So, no, our friend Crispin Glover like confronts him and, you know, like they talk it out. Arlie, Ermy, and the rats. See, I'm. Oh, uh, I think the world needs to take example uh, <laughs> of these rat situations and talk things out more. I definitely right, and like he uses them to like pop a coworker's tires, or maybe even his boss's tires. Like he just sticks them on the car. Yeah, I don't know. Did you know there was an article that was real? There was a girlfriend. Who, who trained, trained squirrels yeah. to go after? Yeah, her fucking. I ass. did read about. It. Wait, she was to go after. Her. She was a. I believe she was a performer in a circus at some point or something like that. She was like an animal trainer for a circus. Sounds like an ex. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see her mugshot? No. I, like she looks. She's like cross-eyed in it. She look like she looks like the psychopath who who trained squirrels to go after her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Like Wait, she, it she fits trained the them bell. to attack. Yeah, she trained them to attack. You know how, like, uh, when you see mug shots of pedophiles, you always kind of go like, oh, yeah, of course. Mm. Like, that crime, her mug shot fit that crime. Uh, like the like What the, happened to her boyfriend, though? Like, she did it? He was, a, I believe he was attacked by them, Squirrels but like nuts. obviously survived. <laughs> Squirrels like nuts. Let's just put it that way. Mm. Mm-hmm. Was that the objective? I don't Oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I guess girlfriend, you know, like, was it spurned? That's the right word. I spurned. wonder why he broke up with her. She seems so normal. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> I mean, have you you heard about that shit with YouTube, right? What the sh- you're not the shooting at YouTube? Yeah, yeah. That was a weird thing too. She, she looked that mugshot looked the same. Well, just just her anywhere looked the same. Where you're saying like cross-eyed, those fucking. Yeah. She's got those. Uh, Bert and Ernie Unibrows. You know, there's a there's a bunch of like that's you, as as much as you hate to make those things like seem interesting. Like the story, the big story behind that's kind of kind of interesting because they had apparently they knew she was dangerous, or like they had suspected, and the yeah. cops had like talked to her like the day of, mm-hmm. and like had found her like sleeping in her car like around the area of the headquarters and like talk to her and i guess she was just like fuck it they were like oh she seemed like normal yeah like no indication when mm. in her videos she doesn't even seem normal <laughs> oh dude her mm. did you you don't know about this bill no right? i don't know anything about this well, she's so like a uh, vegan activist and all this like weird yeah. and because she w- i think she was possibly muslim pakistani um she dude okay she made really dumb fucking videos. It was like one video is, all right, here's how you microwave a pizza. And then like next video is, here's how you do a leg stretch. And she's like in a full leopard outfit and just like literally lifting her leg up from her knee. And that's it. And 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 the, like it, it's funny because it, it looks like something from Tim and Eric because the video quality is actually <laughs> really good. It's way better produced than we have. You know? <laughs> and it's really well produced, but it's you're what I watched it and I thought it was Tim and Eric. From from my so, understanding, she had a following and she was frustrated because some of her stuff be, got taken down. No, no, or? no, because her shit got demonetized. Oh, and, and, and so they, she was telling. Wait, what does that mean? Where so, like when you get over ten thousand views, you like, get money per. 
per view. You yeah, get money. because of because of ad contents, yeah. Okay. And she just wanted I I don't know why she was saying well I'm pretty sure it's because they just thought she was fucking dangerous after like you know like these uh, like from what I understand though none of the vi- like she might have she seemed like a loon but she none of it she, seemed like when, threatening from when, my understanding when yeah. when they demonetized all the videos were Wait, threatening demonetized the, like stop giving her money yeah. yeah like you can still post but you're not making any money off this and they um. She her argument was it's because they were racist that she's Pakistani or Muslim, and and so what she, was their argument? I I think it was just because she seemed dangerous and that her videos weren't. Um, no, they they can't say she seemed dangerous. Yeah, because because then it's like, and then she came and did something like super dangerous. Yeah, they, I, they think yeah. they're just like we're a business. Like fuck you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not, I I didn't read into the whole story because, like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, to say that like YouTube is at fault here, but I am curious as to what exactly transpired. Yeah, you know. Well, obviously, as, as, YouTube as, is not at fault for someone coming in and shooting up. I mean, YouTube, what, what 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 bothers me is like people. I I think I'm on the same page as you, where it's so fucking easy. To sort of come up with a to prevent a situation like that, you know, for uh, like well, I, I, I the only re- the only reason why I say that is like for my for my thing at work, right, where I'm getting fucking reported for wanting to shoot up the place. Yeah, I have anxiety. Yeah, I may have problems. Ba- yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm kind of weird. But you, it's not illegal to be fucking weird. But what do I need? What I'm doing now? I'm talking to somebody. Not to mention. There's most people who, well, from what I've heard, most people are a pretty fucking obvious threat. Like, like, like where, 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 like, like, like the high school shit. Well, everybody f- knows that they have like firearms and plans and are capable of do and have the skill to do something like that. A, a lot of them, but there, um, there's actually a lot of conflicting data on that because the the big thing now, particularly after like Parkland. Was the, was the, Florida right? Yeah, was the focus on like mental illness, right? Yeah, as opposed to stopping access. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot of conflicting studies on it because this is this is the way our world is now. Is a you know bipartisan studies is that one group says this and one group says that. Yeah, but it looks. I mean, at least with majority of the data, it looks it looks like it's under you know under the majority of people who have like mental illness or show like serious signs of doing something like that. Mm-hmm. So and like she had like her family had been concerned that she was going to do harm to herself, I believe. But like there wasn't anything that like no one had see, heard or seen any like plans to go shoot up a place. Yeah, like the. You know, it differs a little bit from, like, the Austin bomber or whatever whose, like, roommate was, like, there while he was making fucking bombs. Yeah. Like, should I, maybe, I, should I tell somebody about him putting nails into a pipe with a bunch of gunpowder? I think, I think he did it because what, what was that last snap was when his roommate kept sinking garbage dump over the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't say that. I'm uh, be <laughs> scared going home. But, uh... <laughs> Oh God! Uh, no, the, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's an interesting one too because uh, they there's Charles no Manson? It, well Charles Manson is something else but they're the like Austin Bomber dude like they don't have any motive for him they don't have any idea like what uh, like that to the point where they had the like preacher at his church being like no like he was he we thought he was like a good dude like normal like w- what like yeah. what. That, oh. and and it seems like the the cases are like some of those cases are kind of similar to that. It's just yeah. like where the where the fuck I, did this you know, come from? I this may be changing my opinion, but I agree with that too. That sometimes people just need to accept the oh long term of shit happens, shit fucking happens. Most of the time when that shit happens, it's not preventable. And and isn't it fucking kind of like a little irritating that every time that shit does happen, people are like, "What was his motive?" What was his reasoning? What was the well, reason? Yeah, because they want it like a lot of that is to distract from the, from the the issue of gun violence. See, I'm saying the positive way of looking at that is what was his motive? 
what can we do to, to, prevent to help a person like yeah. that? Impre- yeah. But but which is a noble which is a noble cause and yeah, something yeah. that needs to be looked into. However, we also can't ignore the the gun access thing too. I, I, mean, I, I think these days though they look for the reason. Who do we point the finger? Uh, yeah. At? Well, the yeah. Game. yeah what? The blame game. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And it's a it's a very multifaceted issue. It's not it's not one thing or the other, but it's also it's also something that for the most part, like we, not a lot has changed in in at least in the legislative part of it as to you know preventing these things. Yeah. And I you know I'm not I'm not gonna go ahead and say like what needs to be changed. I don't know. I'm not a not a legislator, but you gotta do something, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so the focus keeps shifting. We talk about mental health. We talk about, you know, like high capacity uh, magazines and, you know, what is considered an assault rifle and all that shit. But Being nothing on a actually. a shitload of antidepressants. Yeah. Like, we could, yeah. Uh, was it psychotropic medications? Or it seemed to be a, a common, you know, theme in some of these shootings. And, like, but we, but nothing's really been done at all. Yeah, you know, with exception of a few things here and there, and I know like Deerfield, Illinois, just made um, assault style weapons and high capacity magazines illegal. Um, they're being sued by several groups right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I don't know how I, exactly I feel about that. I think if a municipality uh, like you agrees to it, then they should be able to do that. But it's it's a tough one to kind of go at. Yeah, but I I'm gonna set the example, and I think like we've talked before on an episode of. Just don't give in to the paranoia. Just. Oh well, yeah, you gotta. I'm 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 I I'm safe. The way I am. Well, like, that's part of it too. Is that you know. You reach out to somebody who who seems to be having problems with some of that stuff, and you can, you there's there's the possibility of preventing. Yeah, yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. And that and that is exactly the point that I was gonna make, at work. Like, if there was a person who is lonely, who feels shitty. Who I f- who would who I would suspect of something that directly a shooting? Why wouldn't you fucking talk to that person? You yeah. know. And well, uh, the other on the other end of it, I I don't know exactly what the like what bearing this has to the shootings portion of it, but I know like a lot of a lot of people who like commit suicide and stuff like are very are very adamant at hiding that from people mm-hmm. because uh, because there's a certain level of like shame associated. So there's there's that problem to it too. Is it, it is it's hard to detect, and because everybody's everybody's different in the way they deal with things and show emotion, and so it's it's just such a difficult, all around difficult thing to tackle. Mm. Everybody's different. Can I can I be honest here? Uh, this you is one you thing. seem <laughs> anything <laughs> always honest. Long story short, long story <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. So when because I recently had a doctor's visit and because of the medication that we on, I'm sure yeah. anytime that you go you get MRIs and EGs yearly, right? Uh not yearly, but I do occasionally get them just depending. Do they give you a form that says what is your level of anxiety? Yep. What is your level of all Every that? time every time I go for uh an appointment you get uh an anxiety, depression and suicide uh like chart. Yeah. Because uh, from from at least what my neurologist has explained to me, apparently anxiety and depression. Because I have anxiety induced epilepsy, mm-hmm. so like from from what he was telling me, the the like brain chemistry involved with those disorders like really exacerbates uh, epileptic episodes. Yeah, and you know what sucks too is that like whatever you're taking helps to prevent that, but it can also be a side effect. Well, yeah, That's because like uh, with, I know okay, lamotrigine, I know is is actually FDA approved for, I think for use for like uh, treatment of like psychosis and like bipolar and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like it has those effects just because it's an overall depress, you know, like brain uh, stimu- uh like a suppressor. Yeah. So. It 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 suppresses certain you know neurochemical responses in your brain, and apparently it can also help with like psychotic disorders. And I know trileptol, not FDA approved for it, however, does a similar thing in the brain. But one of the main side effects 
to having an imbalance with it, like if you miss a dose or things like that, is massive mood swings and like oh, like manic depressive states. So I like, yeah, can definitely vouch for that. Yeah, I can as well. Like it, it, that's definitely happened before. If I've if I've missed a dose, I've, yeah. I've noticed things are different with my mental state. And like, yeah, it is interesting. It comes with it comes with the but, complications of any sort of like neurological medication. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to go into like per, my personal issues because I've because I've recently having a lot of them. But one of the things that uh, my therapist said is like, I'm incredibly because of the way I was brought up, critical and judgmental of everyone, including myself. And so I sort of told myself one of the first steps is being like, it's going to be okay if I find out that I'm bipolar because may, because those side effects are becoming, you may not even be bipolar, but the, the side effects are becoming it, you know? Yeah. And it's a, well, there's a, there's a thing called diagnosis syndrome too. That I mean, like, I guess temporary mood yeah. swing type. It's so like, more mood swing, not being bipolar, but... Yeah, and you have to be accepting of it, and, you know, that's because, I, the fir- what is it, the first step to admitting you have a problem, Yeah, or yeah. the first step to solving a problem is admitting you have one. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. Well, um, or right, I didn't know if I'm cutting you off. No, no, no. I was, I was saying the reason why I, I, I'm, I brought this whole thing up is I feel that it really fucking bothers me when people ask you, do you ever think about suicide? Doesn't every fucking normal person think about that? I mean, I mean, like, have you ever thought about, okay, if it, if I had to do that, how would it be? You, you like, doesn't every normal person do that? Or, or at least, I, I mean, that's just like saying, have you ever pictured somebody getting killed in the fucking culture that we live in? I like I've seen movies, you know. I think there's a validity to asking that question because because most of the time it presses people to who think about it a lot to be to, like, to yeah, help. yeah, to be like, I do do that, and that's well, something well, I should think about. But I do think a lot of people do. I mean, like it's certainly it's certainly like a thought that's come across my mind. Not yeah, not something that permeates my it, you it know makes, life. But it, I'm saying doesn't it makes me uncomfortable? I don't know if you feel that way where. You feel like, I mean, well, maybe I, I, I'm a, I'm a brutally honest person, and the problem is that, you know, for some, for them asking me that, I'm not thinking. All right, they're gonna throw me in a fucking, you know, nut house, and try to treat me. When the truth is, like, I'm not going to engage in it. I'm not going to move forward with it. But I definitely have thought about it all the fucking time. You know, like well, well, not all the time. I would but say I mean, if you're like, thinking about it all the time, maybe maybe that's a a little <laughs> bit different. But well, not, no, not, like I I get I get that too. It's like it's I think it, there's a certain like it's sort of a natural thing sometimes to be like oh f- like w- what if this happened and what like what would I like how what's my out yeah and like and I actually don't I don't have you know I don't have that much of an issue with with people like thinking about that sort of stuff like yeah. You know, if it if it becomes an obsession, yeah. then you know if it's something that somebody like looks to as a comfort, then maybe there's an issue. But yeah. you know, like I think it comes across people's minds. May I intervene real quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was gonna say. I you... feel like we've kind of fallen into a rabbit hole. Okay. Like, <laughs> like that's maybe getting like a little too dark. A little too dark. <laughs> maybe, okay. Um. So I thought of a few icebreakers. Okay. Um. Uh, and I'm gonna try and bust one out, and I think it's gonna work really well. By committing suicide through breaking ice. Uh, no, no, we're not <laughs> talking about that anymore. <laughs> uh, Space Jam sure was a good movie, huh? Space Jam was a great movie. It, it made me want to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> Phil, I'm trying so fucking hard. And, um, Zach, question for you. All right, uh, shoot away. So, Well, not at, like... Uh, <laughs> sorry, maybe, no, maybe wrong choice of uh, words. <laughs> sure. All right. Um, Are you thinking about it now, Bill? <laughs> Mark <of> five. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. No. Is it is it uh, every day? Sometimes <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but, uh, so today is Saturday, the end of the calendar week. What was the highlight of your week? Of this week? Yep, this past week. And Phil, start thinking because I'm going to ask you next. And if you bring up suicide or guns, <laughs> I'll be sad. Well, Sandry. Um, 
I hosted the open mic on at the Elbow Room on Wednesday. Nice. And it was dead because it was sleeting outside. It, even though it's April, it was sleeting outside in like 30 degrees. So there were three people on the list. And I, I've i always stuck by the philosophy that we play our best to an empty room. Sure. And I got to say, it was that was probably the most fun I've had hosting in a long time. I was... A little bit of an asshole on the mic, yeah, I'm seeing, but I I enjoyed the shit out of it, and we had some great music, like really good musicians come through and have a lot of fun, was even it? though they're playing to just the other the three other people who yeah. are you know who are there to play. Yeah, that okay, that's what I was gonna ask because I've been to comedy shows like that where the only people in the audience are the other comedians just waiting to get on. Yeah, and it's like not the same, but it was. It's not well. It's not quite the same because you don't get the audience involved. You know, there's, but there's also no pressure on it, so you can kind of you can kind of have fun with it, experiment with it. Like I went up and played, uh, you know, because we went through the set list twice. You know, everyone else played a little bit more because we had so much time. And like I went up and played, you know, played a couple songs that are newer and that I wouldn't normally like bring out there, and it's a. Uh, it, it was cool. It was nice. You know, I I really enjoy that. I don't want it to be that way all the time because I much more enjoy playing to an audience. But it sure. has its, you know, it has its moments. It definitely, it definitely is a lot of fun in a lot of ways. Pros and cons. Yeah. Very good. Phil, coming your way. Highlight of the week. Highlight of the I, week. I, I, t- today's the that's the, today's the highlight. What I, this? My my whole week was shit. Yeah. Oh god. Oh. Whole week was shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I I mean I had my my horrible anxiety affecting my digestive system and but uh I mean I'm feeling good today. I downloaded an old game that I haven't played in 10 years. Which You're, game? Um Settlers 3. <laughs> Is that like um an RTS game it's or a, It's like Age of Empires. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And but this one I I haven't played Age of Empires. I heard Settlers is different because there's aspects to it where it's a pain in the ass. I don't, have you ever played it, Zach? Um, I have not actually played it. I've watched people play it. As lame as that sounds, I've, yeah, I've, I've watched people play it. But yeah, and I've played Age and, of Empires. And Age of Empires, I've watched people play but never played. Yeah. Uh, Civ was more, like, in in that sort of vein, was more of the game that I played. Yeah. But. Settlers, you, like, pick. Um, they. It's cool because, uh, well, they tried to make it incredibly realistic, which made it an incredible pain in the ass. <laughs> for example, like the difficulty levels are set on the um, empires, and whichever empire, like for example, the Romans, the best lasting empire, the most powerful empire, is easy level because they're the strongest fucking power. Sure. And then, like after that, is like Egyptians because they're like the next high. What empire. about the Mongolians? What about the Mongolians? Phil? I think Mongolians is third. Yeah, yeah, Mongolians is third, mm-hmm. and then like the. Bonus edition has like Mayans and Aztecs. Oh, really? Yeah. I that you know the the like uh, Central and South American like ancient civilizations never seem to cross my mind when I think about that stuff. But they were massive and super like powerful for a long yeah. time. And where did they go? Aren't there mysteries surrounding at least the Mayans? Yeah, there's definitely like, and there's all sorts of questions about other weird like shit the with Aztec, different the civilizations, Incans, there. like the Nazca lines. You know? Yeah, I the. The like bird figures in yeah. the desert. Yeah. Like, also, you can only the see if you fly over it. The like Guatemalan heads. Have you? No. There's like there's these. I think it's Guatemala. Um, there's these m- massive, massive. They're like thousands of years old. Massive stone sculptures that are just like randomly there, and they weigh like some umpteen amount of tons and they're mm. like they're they have no idea how they got like, them. Like Stonehenge almost. Sort of. Yeah. Like Where Easter they, Island. Yeah, they had no idea how they how they got them from their quarries to there. They have no idea how they were able to sculpt them with such precision and all this shit. And it like it all ties back to some civilization that they don't know anything about, and, like all that interesting shit. I I read some shit that with Mayans, um, they used to. You know how like like for example, when pyramids are built and all that shit, they needed a shitload of slaves, who would. They, they, the, you know, the people ruling would just be like, "You're building this for the gods," and so you, e- even though you're gonna die from this horrible fucking like torture of carrying these huge blocks, 
we're going to make sure that you go to a like good place with the gods. So they would like when they when they when if something happened like say you broke your leg or you were like you you can't build, you can't contribute to this whatever we're building, they would make you suffer because they said the more you suffered the further up you'd go with the gods so they would first wait till you're dehydrated and then skin you alive the more okay. you suffer the more it shows you <laughs> really care <laughs> right yeah. that uh, yeah. that sounds really lame yeah it does <laughs> no one no he broke his leg oh, <laughs> oh come <Yeah>. on <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe Sorry. a little, maybe a little too deadpan. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, I actually, I, I listened to some. I think it was on uh, NPR. I listened to something about uh, about the Egyptian pyramids. I don't know so much about like the South American stuff, like the Mayans and whatnot. But uh, they were saying that they actually think now that they weren't built by slave labor, and that they were actually built by conscripted like craftsmen. And like, I guess like you could say conscription some sort of slavery <laughs> sounds <laughs> like sounds like union to me yeah yeah uh yeah we're have not you, gonna go <laughs> go down that have you, have, you guys, but <laughs> have you ever guys heard about um like what the story is with lady of guadalupe no 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 yeah see i i didn't know this i think i might have learned it from your favorite guy bill bill maher in religious <laughs> oh <laughs> no no everyone but, loves bill maher no but but you know he's obviously I, I actually do love him, but it's all good. <laughs> We're all different, you know? And that's what this episode is about. But that, Diversity. <laughs> that and long story short. And love. <laughs> but uh um Mostly love. Yeah, he 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 was saying how like Gun bizarre violence. Well well here's here's what I, I okay, I'm not gonna hit on all religion. I think religion kinda helps people, but he was saying how he was rid- ridiculing all of them. What my um argument debate is is that i don't understand when it originates somewhere how does somebody just like take it and be like this is ours kind of like mormonism no jesus appeared in utah you know because mormon is <laughs> mormonism <laughs> was started by a con man yeah yeah exactly and so, so where's his golden plates just saying like if you're if your religion is based off of golden plates left there by i think they were the egyptians or some sh- weird shit where are they? Well, couldn't that be said about like any religion, really? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but Mormonism in particular, because at least the at least the Christians are still looking for the Holy Grail. Sure, or, you know, like the Ten Commandments, or you know, again, still searching. Yeah, I'm saying, and they like, think they found saying, Noah's Ark. And and I'm saying, like, when you when you're trying to start some new, like, dude, make a new new delusional. Well, that's what Scientology book. did. A yeah, very, yeah. very unique that, honestly, delusion. That's, that's the one thing I respect about Scientology. It's, it, you know, there's some really sketchy shit about it, but at least it's fucking really weird and unique. You know? <laughs> really? Like, yeah, if you're going to take a cult to the I, mainstream, I mean, I, I make mean, it unique. I mean, honestly, wouldn't you, like, look at something and be like, that is so fucking dumb if somebody just, you know what? No, Scientology. Not until you're at, what is it, CS level seven? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Once, don't you're, know. once you're there, <laughs> you know. Well, you know uh, the truth. La- Lady of Guad- Guadalupe was um, that she reappeared on this path in Mexico, and so in to give them to give her reverence every year, you have to. There's a uh, like a really treacherous, fucking rocky, pebbly, mile long path where you have to start at the beginning and crawl there on your knees until you, like your knees will bleed. Like because you're supposed to bleed for lady, and you're supposed to like crawl all the way to her on your knees. So that's apparently. That's I like just the like whole. the part where religion makes people be better people. Yeah, not so much the ritualistic, bizarro nature of it. Mm-hmm. I like Christmas. A rip off of a pagan holiday. Uh, yeah, man. Well, no, I see. That's why I, I I believe and love Santa Claus because it's. Unique and weird. It's pure. Same with the tooth fairy. And mm-hmm. the Easter bunny. That's the weirdest one. I love that. Where I, does that even originate from? Yeah, right. An East what is the story? Even a bunny comes and hides eggs? Yeah. That's I mean that that's like the I don't know where it's it had to have been a more recent 
thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I do want to know the origin story of the two marketing executives in like the 1950s going, how do we sell these eggs, boys? <laughs> Easter's coming up. <laughs> Yeah, no. It's it might it might have been a huge like egg company, you know, like we're having a good season. What are so we gonna do we with got all these cream bu- eggs? We got this bunny here. <laughs> We've got we're too many <laughs> jelly beans. Mr. Cadbury, what do we do with these? <laughs> what are we gonna do with all this plastic grass? <laughs> <laughs> Why did we think this was a good idea? Baskets. We need tons of baskets. <laughs> and a rabbit. Get a rabbit. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to like a uh, a driving range with the plastic grass. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah. So that joke was a little. Was, in what the was rough. uh? Did you did you have a good thing happen in this week? Did I? Um. Yeah, you asked us. You forced me to say to talk about. And, it. And well, ju- that's right. because I wanted to change the topic. Just a reminder. We can easily go back to, I, to right, no, suicide. No, I, 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 no, no, I was gonna say that just because we'll I can't there. talk, just because I can't mention suicide, doesn't mean you can't, Bill. Uh, so tell us about your week. All right. So, <laughs> is here is right now where it ends? Are you, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, are you are you a one or a five on the scale? All right. right now? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Very funny. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I performed Thursday night, and that's always cool. Where at? Uh, the store in Lincoln Park. Okay. I did like a seven-minute set there. Uh, this girl I'm seeing came and saw me perform for the first time, and she didn't hate it. That's always good. Which is uh, a miracle, frankly, because I'm not that funny. He's um, pretty funny. Oh, thanks. But I, you know, I was at work before the show, and I typed out a set, and I did perhaps maybe the first like two jokes off of it. And then I was just was like, it five minutes? No, it was like seven, seven, oh, eight minutes. Okay. Um, they shine a light for you? Uh, no, they... So generally, I'll have whoever's producing the show say something really obvious, like, Bill, you're so handsome. And that's how I know I have one minute left. Right. Um, this time, Merrick just shouted, One minute, Bill. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Like, subtle. Throw you... you- yeah. Three off, I, I can imagine. It yeah. always does. That. It always does. And that's something I need to like practice. Like They'll say one minute, then I'll just stop mid-joke and say, oh, thank you, and then like return to my... Or maybe it's charming. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. You seem to, you seem to work uh, outside stimulus into, uh, into your act pretty well. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I think just me not missing a beat, just boop, bop, boop. <laughs> maybe that uh, attests to my talent or whatever. Um, how arrogant did that sound? But we all have well, talents. So yeah. I'll and sure, I guess I'll just tell you. Not guys, quite as grand as yours. I are guess. Are you but still but talking? This is my story. Long story short. <laughs> uh, so fucking the producer of the show, who was like one minute, Bill. I was outside the venue or the bar having a cigarette before, like you know, like. 30 minutes before the show started. Yeah. And she comes up and she's like, hi, Bill, this is my date, Aaron. And like, she and I hug and, uh, I'm like, hi, Aaron, I'm Bill. Nice to meet you. And she turns to him and says, Bill's blind. And like, I'm standing outside, like cigarette in one hand, cane in the other. And I was like, what the fuck was that? And she says, oh, just in case you didn't notice. And I was like, oh, okay. Anyway, Aaron, you you better you better laugh in there, and he says, "Well, if I don't laugh, how will you know?" And I explained to him that it's my eyes that don't work, not my ears. And like I don't know, that was that was that. But oh, I thought you were saying you're set right now. That 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 story that I just said right now is became like the second joke of my set. Oh, okay. So I opened with a diarrhea joke because you know. Mm-hmm. That's what professionals do. And then I did some of my classic blind jokes. And then from there, I was like, guys, it's fucking real. Like, let me tell you about something that just happened, like, <laughs> outside today. Like, Mer- where's your date at? Oh, and I totally said her name. Can we, um, like, blur that out? I wasn't going to say her name. But anyway, uh, so I go into the story. Everyone's fucking dying. And it's just like, all right. And then just kind of, like, rolled with it. And then mm-hmm. before I knew it, she shouted, one minute. And then... Uh, like I had one minute left, and it's like fuck. 
Like I'm still like going back to the set list I wrote earlier. I'm still like a fifth of the way through that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's, all right, let's wrap up. Mm -hmm. And I did. And the girl I'm seeing, uh, I guess she really enjoyed it. So there, that was my highlight. That's That's good to hear. That was a good highlight. I had, I had a good set. Uh, You know, this girl I'm seeing (coughs) liked it. And that just makes things a whole lot easier. Yeah. Or at least she's a good actress. Like maybe she fucking hates it. But like the fact that she's humoring me. Yeah. Like, but isn't that huge? Isn't that all we really want is <laughs> is someone to lie to us sweetly? That's, yeah, that's sad but true. I um, yeah. Despite what I said a few weeks ago when I went to go see stand up with you, let's do it every Thursday, dude. I'm never fucking doing stand up again. No, I can't. No, man, it's too much. I got too much anxiety shit going on in my life to be doing that. Shit. And not even that, you know. Even if I was completely comfortable on stage. I just, I, I don't think, I think I have a better chance of being funny on this podcast than anywhere else. Okay. But I'm going to, and because of that, I'd like to pitch one of my jokes that are recently on here. All right. Yeah. And that's, um so th- this is all the end. Okay. It's mostly a true story. Long story short, long story short. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so um growing up, this, this, oh, yeah. So this is a true story. It really is. um Growing up, I used to always record all my favorite songs off alternative radio locally q101 it was rock 1035 for me <laughs> no, but isn't q101 da- shut down now 94 7 the zone yeah. um no i, I don't uh, know q101 was, was shut down now it's like 979 it, got shut down was yeah. it 979 no, that's no. christian rock now yeah i think 1011 is still wkqx i wonder if because 979 was classic rock and they had like creed on there and then they're like now we're christian rock we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott Stapp's loving it. But yeah, uh, that, that little, that tiny, uh, that tiny genre of crossover that, <laughs> yeah. that works. They're like, this is working be, well for our market. Dude, I, I hate to fucking say it, but I liked Creed first album when it came out. Like, I, I didn't think it was dude, bad. It was They no. were like all grunge. and Dude, My Own Prison is a great yeah, fucking yeah. song. And it's also a lot of the a lot of the bands of that like genre that get a bad name, like... Uh, What's the other big one that fucking uh, POD? No, not P- I actually lo- I actually really like some POD to be honest. But, You're talking uh, about like Christian rock, right? Not Christian. not necessarily. I was talking more like grunge stuff. Pearl um, Jam, not Stone Nickelback. Temple Pilots, Nickelback. Nickelback. There we go. That's yeah. the one I was looking for. You know, everybody bitches about Nickelback, but I guarantee you know at least half the words to three of their songs. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't think they were that bad when they first came out. No, because they were so they're formulaic, but they're catchy. Yeah, and, and you still hum along to them. You're not going to turn them off if they play on the radio. Fucking love Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Well, hang on. Going back to Nickelback, did they do the song that's like I burn up, I bend down to the bottom of every bottle? I think yeah. that is Nickelback. Yes. Yeah, these five words in my head, like that. Song. Photograph is always the one that comes to mind. Oh, for I me, hate but. that song. <laughs> That, I I like Nickelback's other songs. Like I think I prefer Animals over Photographs. <laughs> but anyways, to my joke. Just talking about long right. story short. Right. Sorry. Who's doing long <laughs> story sorry. this time? Yeah. Who's doing long story? All stories? right, okay. We've had just so, about enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's hear your joke, funny I, uh, man. I uh um, so I would record my favorite like grunge songs on uh, cassette tape while I um ate dinner, <clears throat> and this was when I was I, I got into music really early, like six uh seven years old. My grandma was fucking nutty, so she all I remember her doing is cooking food and praying the rosary on Polish rosary radio all fucking day. It was cooked cabbage, rosary. Even even in even if she was making a meal, like oh I'm making you know pierogies and folding them and baking them, and then I got to put them in the boiling water. Like in between those little breaks, all right, I'm gonna do like fit in like three prayers, you know. It was just all the time. So I'm like, man, fuck this shit. I don't want to hear this rosary shit out loud. So. I record my radio really loud, and an Alice in Chains song came on full volume. Which so, one? I think it was "I Stay Away." Oh, that's a good one. And uh, yeah, I love that fucking song. And they, um, my grandma shouted as I turned it louder. She goes, "Yeah, you know what? That's what you're gonna sound like when you're melting in hell." <laughs> and uh, it's a true story. It's and pretty I, good soundtrack to hell, then. Is that right? And I, and I'm like, what? I love this band. She goes, no. The important part is. You're gonna go to hell if you listen to this music. That's why they sound like they're melting in it. 
because they made that decision. So what then did she think of the Beatles? I don't know. I don't know, man. But um, when she ended up uh, dying, I'm hoping uh, the important p- part is: does she sound like a good Alice in Chains song, and is it the new singer or the old singer when she's mouth? Oh, that's <laughs> a very important <laughs> distinction to make. I don't know. Is that a good that. joke? <laughs> no, I like it. I think. I think it could work. <laughs> I think, like, as far as like grandmother death jokes go, like that's definitely one of the nicer ones I've heard. That was good. okay. Um, <laughs> grandmother death. Jokes. For my know. novel list of grandmother yeah, death. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other grandmother death jokes that you want to share? Uh, that oh. might that might be my shtick. You know, when somebody needs grandmother death jokes, that's when I I've got a grandmother death joke. Yep. It happened at work. And we were in a conference room and we were trying to like project something from a computer onto the projector screen or like airplay, I think they call it, mm-hmm. but I'm not super tech savvy. Anyway, it wasn't working. So we called the IT guy in and uh, the IT guy comes in and he says, did you guys try unplugging it or unplugging it? Or like unplugging it and then replugging it in? That normally works. And my coworker said, that didn't work so well for my great grandmother. And I fucking lost it. <laughs> like, I thought that that was the funniest thing, and everyone just kind of looked at us like, what? What? With you guys. That, yeah. So. <laughs> no, I think that, I, I think that's It was, funny. like, so subtle, like, in the middle of, like, this fucking meeting. Like, it was brilliant. It was, like, sheer brilliance. And I, I hold him in the highest regard because of that one comment he made, uh, like, nine months ago. And that forever has, like, earned my respect. He, um, the only second new joke that I wrote. Okay. Uh, Is it another grandmother death joke? No. Okay. Uh, I think it might. Uh, it taught me why I should not use the R word. And that is because, uh, so one day, haven't you used that word like six times tonight? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It was, it was, it was bonus, you know, bonus clips. It was off, (laughs) off air. (laughs) But, um, uh, yeah. So I was, you know, I was trying to fix my car. And I couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong with it. It was just constantly fucking up, constantly messing up. And I screamed. I went to the mechanic and I go, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with it. I got, I just got it tuned up. I just got it. My car is completely fucking retarded. It's completely fucking retarded. And um, I couldn't figure out what the hell is wrong with it. And um, And he goes, yeah, you know, that's a sensitive word. Some people get offended. I'm like, are you offended? He's like, no. I'm like, well, then fuck you, man. So he puts the. It's a good way to handle. He puts the uh, he puts the c- the the computer reader to the car. And, I said, so what kind of code does it read? And I read it, and it said, you need an oil change. You're the retard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's. So my car got offended, and that's why I no longer use that word. And then all right, <coughs> well, all right. <laughs> I don't know. If that w- does that work? No. Well, your car's <laughs> engine was rattling around, so it yeah. might have it might have been a little pissed off yeah. at the time. Sure. I again, I wouldn't tell that joke on stage, but <laughs> you know. Yeah. We'll let our listeners decide. Right. Can you say it again in Gaelic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it with a Cockney accent. Don't, don't you uh, dare! Don't push me, man. <laughs> God. I think I think somebody made a joke about how the worst accent is Cajun. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. Oh, it is. Uh, it's I pretty don't guttural. Yeah, I was say I don't know how to uh, like reproduce it, but I've heard it before. Yeah, that I've been in Cajun country. I do. I do love it down in Louisiana. As um, do I. But it is. So you guys it can't is re- something re- reproduce else. It. No, because you can't. I can't even really understand it. Um, did you ever see the Scooby Doo cartoon video, where it was? Oh, I think it was a really terrible musical one, and it was about like something in the bayou, and like the narrator of it had like that thick Creole, and it was like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 hee hee hee, nah, it's and I don't, I don't know. It just like you could not. It's like you know that accent you get when you when you go anywhere outside of a major city, that like little bit of draw. Yes, I know that. Phil, do you know that? Where, 
you yourself get it or somebody else? But like like people who are like people from there like have a little bit of a draw. When you go outside of Chicago. Yeah. Like like, like any like maybe like twenty miles south or something or, or west or whatever. Yeah, like like outside like when you when you get outside into like of, country like yeah, more yeah. country areas. Yeah. It's like that mixed with a southern accent and a little bit of French. Okay. I'm gonna try and put that together. It's a little bit of French. Yeah. It, really? Yeah. The K like the whole Cajun thing is that there were there were a bunch of French settlers. I thought Cajun was black and Asian. Mm-mm. No. Oh, okay. Like a, like like Ebonic and no, or some, I don't know. No, it's like like South Louisiana. Oh wow! So it's wow. like black and French. Well, I, I will have to. Exp- we're, we're gonna have to meet some Cajuns. Um, I gotta show you that Scooby Doo cartoon. Okay, you'll hate it. <laughs> it's it's not very good. Is it scary? No, Zombie Island was scary. I feel like didn't that take place in New Orleans too? Did you ever I, see Scooby Doo on Zombie Island? No. Anyone, Sandry, please. Was that the live action one? No. Oh. It I was saw the live action one. The live action one was terrifying, but for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Freddie Prince. No, this was like the m- first of a series of like full length animated movies that they made. Okay. And was this like in the seventies or No, this was like in the late nineties to early two thousands. Okay. And then after that they did like Scooby Doo and Cyber Chase or Cyberspace, if you remember. No. Nope. Did you guys? I I watched a lot of Cartoon Network. I guess I don't know they made one for WrestleMania. It was Scooby Doo like the the WrestleMania mystery. Well, I feel like I have the rest of my night set out for me now. Yeah, no, I there is a <laughs> huge uh, library of canon Scooby Doo animated feature length films that you all have to be educated in. Apparently, like some of them are Zombie Island was great. The rest. Eh, not so much. Um, but one of them, there is, no, maybe the vampire one was the musical one. Maybe they're the same one. I don't know. There's a lot of them, and they're not very good. But Zombie Island is good. You should watch Zombie Island. All uh, right. All right. Can we I feel like we've fallen into the Scooby-Doo rabbit hole. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everybody's different. <laughs> all right, let me let love. me get us out of this rabbit hole. Did anything good happen to you guys this week? <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're just you know like <laughs> oh no I, no no i want to go back to talking about antidepressants <laughs> and suicide i've got a lot more hey, to say hey, about they, that. they were they were brain suppressants not antidepressants right per se sure well uh, maybe maybe i was being selfish and i just wanted to change the subject no no because yeah, no we, won't, we got real serious for a second yeah, there yeah. And I just I couldn't contribute. And no, I just I just thought I I just thought does it make anyone else comfortable that if you make one wrong word, they're gonna lock you up somewhere in a nut house? That was basically my issue with that. Like you never felt that way, Bill. What that if I say one wrong word, what one about suicide about oh. anything? You never felt that way. Like like well, I am here to get to try and get help. That like like talking to someone. But you're gonna make me a zombie because you're gonna put me in some institution or something. You never felt that. Well, way? you could, they they only can do that. First off, they they cannot force any medication on you, and they can't send you. They can't involuntarily keep you unless they reasonably think that you are a harm to yourself or others. So I get that aspect of it, where like if you if you're someone who like passively has thought about suicide before like it, i can understand being like maybe i shouldn't tell them yeah. because they're gonna be like you're you're here forever now mm. but uh well it's sort of like it's w- not quite like that anymore and, 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 and also when i meant like the whole aspect of when they ask you do you ever think about it? it's like i love to experience everything i'm just like a jack of all trades i gotta try everything so before i went skydiving i'm like i wonder what does it feel like when you're passed through clouds? Does it feel wet? Like you're like when it's really fucking foggy outside? Did you wonder what it felt like when you hit the ground? Cuz that <laughs> seems more like what we're talking well, about. Well, well, no, what made me think about like like for example, like pulling a Kurt Cobain, do you feel the burn when it goes through you? You know. I think it was more just like upset sadness at, at looking down the barrel. 
Anyway, what? to answer your question, <laughs> we're going uh, down the rabbit hole. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, Round two. So we're trying to drag Billy. Here Bill we in. go. Whoa. Come with us. Come, Come with us. This wild and wacky ride. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, Long story short. To, <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, no. Like I've never like been so concerned about what I say that I fear like being institutionalized because like I've never found myself in that. Like I've never been psychologically evaluated. I. Like they make me take. So they just haven't caught you. That's what you're saying. Exactly right, mm-hmm. and I haven't given them a reason to come after me. You know. Yeah. So. I I do you think we have a reason to become came after? No, that's not what I said. No, I wasn't. That wasn't that's like an accusation. I wasn't. Oh my! Are are you sending people after me right now? Uh, I feel like there not. are people watching now. No, I definitely. Feel. You sit there for <laughs> the next ten to fifteen minutes. I'll explain this to you when no reinforcements arrive. Oh, that's not, not that's coming. fine. I have to use the bathroom um, outside, so I'll yeah. be there when they come. <laughs> What's I'm, happened to I, our nice, I, friendly I, podcast? I just feel like strapping someone to a chair and queuing in garbage dump on loop. <laughs> that, well, it's All right, I did it as a joke a few <laughs> times. A I didn't strap anybody joke. to a chair. No, that's not a bad idea. No, I, no, I messed up... Th- I I, met, I you know mixed the uh, Roscoe being strapped to a chair. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, no. You I still it. maintain that the garbage dump thing is a hilarious joke. Oh, it is. Yeah, especially since I was in Toronto at the time, and he didn't immediately know what was going on. Uh, so maybe he did think he was going crazy for a minute there. Spe- like, did I put Charles Manson on? That that makes me think you being able to control music, cueing in what you want. I wonder if all the people who have like overdone bitching about Nickelback. I wonder if they go to a club and you put on Nickelback if they'd even fucking recognize what it is, you know. Some of it I I bet I bet you that they wouldn't. But also uh side note on that is uh he has his own Spotify account now. <laughs> oh, my, my roommate he got, and he got one. And he has and, he, and he changes it he changes it on my computer when uh when I'm not there. Oh really? But, yeah. That's hilarious. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's it's the exact reason, but I like to I like to hope it is a little bit. Dude, in Chuck we trust, man. You know that you know what's some funny shit about that is that Spotify, I put when I put my band on there, which was like you know, Neo Psychedelic, Black Angel, uh, Brian the Joseph, Crow Crags. Yeah, Crow Clacks, yeah. Okay. Uh I, um, there were two people, well, I, you know, I, I pitched it to a bunch of people, hey man, check out my shit on Spotify. So there was like the regular fans and then there were just like, you know, oh, I'm your friend, so I'm going to check it. So I gave it to, I told white boy to listen to my shit and he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to fall asleep to this shit cause, cause I'm high as fuck. So then when I went and look up Crow Clux, my account, it said, Users who listen to this most listen to, and then there's uh, there's a stoner rock band which is fucking awesome. They're from Minnesota. They kind of sound like Sleep. They're called Glitter Wizard, and then right underneath that was Eminem. <laughs> so that's white boy, yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> so so that's what people uh, will hopefully all the Eminem listeners will check me yeah, out. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll uh, right. slide over to you. Related yeah. artists. There you go. That's how you get them. Yep. Um, I'm just going to casually piss mention break? yeah, or, yeah. that DCB squirt me here like uh, how do I bring it up yeah I need I a thought piss you just break. sat on a Lego that <laughs> mm. um, yeah so I'm going to piss I'll be right back I'll let you guys get back to whatever you were discussing so suicide Phil yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me get up let let's me get uh, out let's, yeah. uh, let's talk about uh, ways to do it alright okay. oh, oh god All right. would you call Robin Williams successful and Chris Benoit a failure since he had a second attempt. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God, I can't answer that. <laughs> and, 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 and this next question is, even though Robin Williams gets a point for being a comedian, which one was funnier? Oh, <laughs> Well, <laughs> do, do, do we break here? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. That's a that's a or little. Or does dark. the rope? D- oh, oh, you know, uh, I was talking about Peaky Blinders earlier. Yeah, and there is a very graphic scene in. Uh, what is that? 
it's a, it's a, a Netflix show based. Okay, in, yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah, based in like I think it's 1920s uh, Britain. I think they're in Birmingham. I got that mixed up when you mentioned Pretty Lights. Oh yeah, like, no, okay, completely different. Um, because that's a band, right? Yeah, Pretty Lights. Well, I think it's just like a single artist. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure, actually. No. Like uh, electronic. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's like a really graphic scene where one of the characters tries hanging himself, and the rope breaks, and suicide for ninety nine point nine percent of the time is never funny. But he comes home and he's sitting at home and like the main character who's like running this crime organization comes back and like that's his older brother who like had tried to kill himself. Yeah. And it had to do with like their estranged father and all. Like, is, that some... a, is it like a serious show? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yes, it's a serious show. It's not like meant to be a comedy. Or... No, there's like there's like small comedic elements, but like it's not meant to be a comedy. It's it's a drama for sure. And uh and he sits down with them, and he looks at the, like the marks on his neck's neck, and he just looks at him. He goes, and he laughs, and he goes, "Next time you should use a gun." <laughs> and uh, like it's it shouldn't be funny at all, but it, but like he's smiling because it, like it was it was this weird sort of brotherly love moment where he's making fun of his brother like attempting suicide. Yeah, and it was like so bizarre to be like, oh, there's love there. Yeah, yeah. Did I, I remember, or I didn't know if I cut you off there. Oh, no, no, you no, that, some, I, that, that's it. Did, when you said that suicide is never funny, I don't know if you remember this. Have you ever seen Family Guy, where um, the Kurt Cobain thing? Uh, have you seen that? Or? I, I, I have not, no. Okay. That made me laugh my ass off, because I fucking hate Courtney Love. I think she's such an annoying slag. Like <laughs> but she um not not uh, a fan myself. Yeah, she she uh, I don't know, but um uh there I forgot what it is. It's like Stewie um they try and buy him a toy or something so they get him a time machine and he goes back in time or there's two things. There there were there were two things that they did on Family Out with Bane. The first one was he goes back in time and they're like, what would happen if we served Kurt, saved Kurt Cobain? Because everybody wants to hear Nirvana now. And it was uh, Stewie, uh, while he's holding the gun, he runs up to him and gives him a uh, haagen like a uh, ice cream. Yeah. And, and then it says, like, and then he goes back to his normal time, and it's like, I don't know, when it was filmed, like 2010 or something? Yeah. And it says, Nirvana, live at the Budokan. And he's, like, 500 pounds overweight sponsoring haagen <laughs> and then the other one that made me laugh my fucking ass off this was the best one was when um they just they're like uh so what really happened was it courtney that caused it and they go well that's a hard question and then they show the scene and it's just her laying on the bed laid out and she's like kurt let's fuck <laughs> And she farts, and then he's like, I'll just go to the garage and be right back. And then you just hear a gunshot. Oh, <laughs> so, all right, no more suicide. All right. Long I'm story back. short. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Good. Up oh, now it's Sandry's turn. Yeah. Are right. we, are, should we give it a break? I don't know. I think, I don't know if I'd be down for a break. I think, I want to just wrap it up. Wrap it up, yeah, sure. When Sandry gets back, let's talk a little shit about him. Yeah, and then uh, I don't know. He gets back. He'll sit down, and we'll say, "All right, everyone, thank you for listening." Okay, I think I think I think it went well tonight. How do you feel? I think it went well. Yeah. I um I don't know if I have any uh, other else. Have you ever seen Sling Blade? Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I've French fried taters. Mm. Mm, <laughs> exactly, dude. I cannot fucking. I've never heard of that movie. Never s- no, you know what? I heard the name and I didn't want to watch it because I thought it was a kung fu movie. Oh, really? And that's what everybody fucking says. Kelly, Kelly, I was going to show it to Kelly and she didn't want to watch it because she thought it was a kung fu movie. Really? Yeah. Weird. I Going back to my earlier story about getting to take four uh, electives, so I got to take uh, film study. That was yeah. one of the movies we watched, at least part of it. Yeah. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, dude. I and I couldn't believe that was Billy Bob Thornton either, because I've seen him in other shit that I really really liked. But he, like, you know, the whole underbite and his keeping his lips stiff. He did that the whole fucking movie. Mm. I read some shit on IMDb that he actually to have that awkward walk. He, he like would put pieces of like broken glass in his <laughs> shoes. Oh, Billy oh. Bob. Yeah. What else? And then I also heard that John Ritter was complete. They're they're best friends, but he was so fucking pissed at him because um, you know how he plays the the gay friend, right? In Swing Blade. Yeah. John Ritter. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he plays. So so I mean, because you said you only saw a little bit of. I it. only saw parts of it. Like, okay. You know, quality scenes with him and the kid. Yeah. Well, the was John Ritter the kid. No. <laughs> oh. A gay little kid. Yeah. No, but um, he um. The kid is in a family where the dad's like a piece of shit drunk asshole. And the mom is best friends with a gay guy who is her boss at a grocery store. I think it's her boss at a grocery store. And um, he really looks after the family. And so he, the gay dude is like, yeah, don't go by the dad. We're talking about Sling Blade. He's like, don't go by the dad because um, he's a piece of shit. He's going to like completely talk shit about you. And then John Ritter kind of like tries to introduce Sling Blade into like like yeah go stay away from him because he's gonna like call you a retard and and completely mm-hmm. shame you, and um I read on yeah IMDb that like John Ritter was pissed because Billy Bob Thornton you know wrote and directed it he's like dude I want you to s- sort of a little bit stick out but not that much because you're you're the gay guy in in the character so he just had him bleach his hair. Uh, it was like black and blonde or something like stripes or something. I don't know. And he's like, John Ritter said like, no, I want this to be temporary. I don't want to do it that bad because I have a conference to go to after this. And I guess like he had to fucking, um, shave his like, hair, like, wear a baseball cap for the conference. Oh, oh God. Cause he was so pit. Like he just, he looked like a, like a model for like, I don't know. at like some, uh, cl- clothing. Sure, very trendy, very yeah, very tr- very not John Ritter. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, very very not John Ritter. Um, that's fun. I love John Ritter. I love John Ritter too. Zach, while you were gone, Phil and I were talking that we might wrap this episode up. How do you feel about that? It was the first time Bill said, "If we don't wrap it up, I'm killing myself." It's true. So so the suicide thing's gone full circle right here. <laughs> yep, exactly. I learned my lesson. I'm sorry for stifling you guys. Um, you know, it's been, it's been a, it's been a long day of growth. I, I, I'm glad you see it our way now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. um, so good night, everybody. Yeah. And I guess on that very happy, uplifting note, <laughs> uh, we'll draw yet another episode of hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing to its end. Thank you so much to all of our listeners out there, wherever you are. And again, this has been. Hear nothing? See nothing. Poop Mike. I I miss John. (laughs) All right. Good night, guys.